It's my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Grounds Crew. We are live once again from the Players' House at the All-Star Game in Denver. Uh, we are joined by a very special guest today, Hunter Pence. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's Absolutely. great to be here. You guys are you guys are really getting after it this All-Star Game. Trying yeah, to as much yeah. as we can. It's been very busy, and it's been a wild day today. You just came from the Home Run Derby, and I would say it's one, been one of the more epic ones I've ever watched in, in my life so far. I mean – the hype from this for this home run derby like all day and like for a long time everyone's been talking about Otani. He's mm -hmm. making history. Yep. And it and it's exciting. He's hit so many homers. He's hitting the ball so far. But we're in Denver. We're in Colorado. The ball's mm -hmm. flying. The home run derby baseball. No humidor ball. Yep. You know, you got Gallo. You got Olsen. You got all of these guys that can mash. So there was so much hype and so much buzz. And mm -hmm. it did not – like disappoint at all. Mm -hmm. It was an electric atmosphere, electric crowd, and, and yes. all of the guys were hitting so many so homers. Many. It was crazy. Pete, Pete Alonso was the most relaxed I've ever seen a human being during yeah. a home run derby. He did some like he, he's freestyle rapping, like he's like bopping around, having fun, raising his hands, yeah. and he just smashed the derby and just blew the doors off of everybody. Like I, we had to leave because we jetted over here, so we didn't get to see the last round. And I heard he, he still hit, like, another 24, 25 home runs to win. And he had time left on the clock. Yeah, and he like, came out at the end with a interesting take, or maybe it's a very correct take, that he's the best power hitter in the world. That's what he said. So, Thoughts? I mean, batting practice is a little different than the game. Mm -hmm. I have Agreed. some theories, you know. And, and you know what? Like, everyone – is talking about that. Like, I got to believe I'm the best. I got to believe. So, of course, yeah, you should say absolutely that. absolutely believe it. You know what? Right now, he's the back-to-back -back home run derby champion. Yeah. Uh, who's hit the most home runs in the last two years? Do we know? That's a good Ooh. question. We got crickets. So, anyway, yeah. but, I mean, I love the attitude, and I love the show that he put on for the mm -hmm. home run derby. Yes. And from my point of view, I was kind of in, in, a bo in the T-Mobile box. It was great. It was mm -hmm. unbelievable. But watching him launch these balls so effortlessly, and I think that there's a lot of – I think it's a it's a it's a master at work to be doing the dancing and to be doing all that because it allows you to not like to be in the moment and to be relaxed. And yep. when you're relaxed versus tense, mm -hmm. you're way stronger. It's all effortless and it all looked effortless. So mm -hmm. I think it was really smart what he did to be dancing, just being himself, yeah. and not being too uptight and serious and trying to muscle it. Yeah, he he made it fantastic. And you're talking about being tense, and we were talking before the show, Shohei Otani didn't didn't look like his usual self it looked like he was kind of pressing a little bit and you said you had some some interesting thoughts on it yes i definitely have some theories and i was i was talking so i got to like ask everyone i was really fortunate to be on the field for bp and like talking to all the players mm -hmm. and my, my one of my favorite questions was like is anyone gonna hit one out of the stadium and people were like i've seen otani go to the third deck and he comes out and you know we're talking and the stadium just goes ah oh, he hits one ball like almost leaves the stadium yes super amazing but the one thing the reason why i wasn't taking I wasn't picking Otani to win this is because there's words that he hasn't been hitting batting practice all season long. Yes, and I this, saw that. Yeah, and this is actually a very smart tactic because hitting batting practice and hitting in the game are a lot different because the speed of the game is so much faster, whereas batting practice, a lot of times when you're hitting home runs in batting practice, and I think this is why a lot of players are like, I don't want to do it, and I thought it was cool how – I know I'm going all over the place, but Trey no, Mancini – was hitting homers the other way. He didn't change his swing. Yep. A lot of times a home run in BP because it's slow is a foul ball. Mm -hmm. So you get your pitch, you hit a home run in BP because it's slow, you hit the, you do the same swing in the game and it's right down the middle and you're like, oh man, I just missed my pitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, what you saw from Otani in the first round, he hasn't hit BP at all, but he's been hitting homers in the yep. game. You click it up to the game speed and all he's probably doing is hitting off a machine that's throwing velo that's getting him ready yep. for the game. Right. And a home run in the game is probably that line drive that you saw down right field. You click it up, and those are launched home runs. So right. he's on game speed, not BP speed. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you you saw it in his power when he did connect, it crushed. But he he definitely doesn't look like that's his game. The other thing is, he seems like a very reserved guy, right? This was a lot of pressure for him that he's tried to you know not be you know in front of the media all the time, doing all that stuff. And this was like a lot of, I think, outside his comfort zone. So I think there was a lot of firsts for him. And I, I, I know he's enjoying playing baseball right now because he looks so happy when he mm -hmm. plays. You know, he's laughing. He's doing all this fun stuff. And he's killing it. And, like, that's awesome to see. I think he doesn't love the extra that comes with it. And I think this was that moment where he had to just kind of – everybody in the stadium is hyped when he comes up. Like, it got so electric in yes. there. And, like, everybody's skin is buzzing. And then immediately it felt like everybody was like, what's happening? Because he wasn't killing it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I just, I, I basically like, I don't think that he, the moment was too much for him or that no. the attention, I think he, he does a good job of like distancing himself and staying in his rhythm. And I think his focus was great. I'm just telling you, like hitting BP is totally yeah. different than hitting in the game. 100%. And like Barry Bonds would always say this. And like a lot of great home run hitters don't hit a ton of homers and BP. I was a guy that did a, a whole bunch just cause I loved it. I love BP homers, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily smart. So Barry would always say you, you, and like Chase Utley and like just some, so many great hitters, low line drives ryan howard he never hit a home never or hardly ever hit homers in bp he did mm -hmm. win one home run derby but he had bp every day and he would just he just click it up a little bit but low line drives as hard as you can and what you saw from otani were all these bullets as it got going he caught his rhythm and he, he made a comeback yep. you know but soto it, it came down to like a, a final three swings yep. yeah by the way soto hit the farthest ball of the whole derby yep it's no slouch that he got mm -hmm. paired oh, up against it was like what, 520 or something like that in an earlier in an earlier when we were talking to andre dawson i actually said my, the sadness for me is I thought that the best matchup like the two best hitters in it are Soto and Otani like Soto to me is a special hitter he's a young guy and I think right now the league is giving him some different stuff that he hadn't seen so he's maybe not got the huge home run numbers but the dude is such an amazing hitter and you saw it in that he was just mashing shots and every time he touched the ball it was flying and he had supreme control and when it went those three at bats and he went three for three like that dude knows his swing yeah and he's got like legitimate like ultra power he's an elite guy so i was sad to see them face each other uh but then it was amazing to actually watch it in person because it was so good to it, watch them battle that way it was super cool when we did get to the final three pitches and you watch soto like really get into the zone. And the fact that he was going first, like leaves, like there's no expectation. There's no, it's just like, I just got to lock in and hit as many homers as I can. But he was like taking pitches mm -hmm. and like, it almost was different than like the, you know, when you have the three minutes or the one minute and you're just like, boom, swing, 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 yeah. swing, swing. He was treating like a real he, at bat. He, he got into his real at bat swing mm -hmm. and he just like clutched up. And it kind of takes, you know, Otani coming up after he's already hit three, you feel a whole yeah. lot of pressure. There's a like, ton there's of a pressure. Huge, yeah. there, there's Unreal. a huge, there's a huge, momentum swing but it was a great show otani put on a great show i really think that you know he was he's just in like kind of game mode and if you're not hitting bp every day they're a little bit different of a swing mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. i love too how after he he lost the entire group of guys came out and and brought him in and it was like this is a great little vibe they have and everybody knows who he is and appreciates like what he's doing for the game it was amazing to see yeah, I mean, he's making history. Obviously, they're changing the rules of the All-Star game so yep. we can watch him pitch and hit. Yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, he's, 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 he's one of the greatest stories in baseball. And everyone, I mean, the standing ovations. Obviously, that we got one for Mancini when he went yep. on a little mm -hmm. tear in that last round. That was super cool. Yep. Standing ovation for Otani when he went on a tear and when they were going at it. Uh, so there were so many just epic legendary moments otani put on a great show he hit the third deck like 20 you know not 20 times but it was like six to seven it. times yeah. he was peppering the upper yeah. deck everyone that went to that home run derby it lived up to the hype and the fact that like otani went down in this epic three round match yes. uh was couldn't have asked for anything yeah else. and then and then like i said like watching alonzo's bp these these the balls that he was hitting it was majestic it was so easy he was dancing he put on a great show mm -hmm. so the, i actually watched somebody uh posted it and i don't know who posted it and I, I'm sorry, I can't attribute to them, but uh, someone showed the the markers for his dad's BP, and his dad like dotted the center. He, no pitch that his dad threw in his first BP missed the strike zone. They were all dead down the center. So like you watched his his hits, it was just this giant cluster. His dad killed it, and he had 35 home mm -hmm. runs in that round. Like he there every swing just it was perfect yeah um so shout out to his dad for being the real mvp Done on this best BP like, ever. <laughs> I, dude, sitting there stretching between and it's like guys just that's just such a cool moment mm -hmm. like, and it's the second time we got to see it but like the first time pete won he looked so nervous the entire time you know he was underneath the thing mm -hmm. he had the bat in his hand he was like getting to then this time he's like happy and he's like i'm already over it if i don't win i don't care yeah like i have one under my belt so you just got to see him just chill so this is my first derby that I got to watch, but like, it, it, it I feel like it was a, an amazing one, mm -hmm. but like, I, it could just be that I'm still gassed up from just the excitement of being inside the place. Mm -hmm. I've been to a couple. This one was amazing. Yeah. And, you know, Alonzo in his first one was a rookie. He had yep. a magical rookie season. Yep, right. So there's so many lights, cameras, so much going on. You know, of course, it's going to be tough to relax. He's yep. just, 
he is like an incredible BP home run hitter and incred- power second to none. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, we're watching the best of the best. And I did think it was cool to watch. There was a, a small part. I don't know if it was on TV or not, um, but they had like high school guys come up and hit. And these dudes yes, were that's huge. Right. Yeah. And they were hitting the ball pretty good. Mm-hmm. But you can definitely see the difference between the big league home run derby yeah. guys and those guys. And yep. they put on a good show and they're going to be great. But these are this is masters at work. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so cool is like you're watching just – the absolute best. And, and like you said, Alonzo was relaxed. He was hitting so many homers. But one thing, one person who got kind of swept under the rug is because Alonzo faced him in the first round. He hit 35 homers. Salvador Perez, who plays in Crushed Kansas it. City, mm-hmm. had 28 homers. I think yeah. that was the second most for the first round. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was, so we were actually saying that up in the stands. We're like, he's got to feel some kind of way right now because he did hit 28. And it's like, You'd be on and against every other guy, mm-hmm. and you'd be moving on if it was just so like that. That again, like great moments that happened from it, and it felt bad. Like everybody watched uh, Sal Perez hit, and it seemed like nobody was like juiced up for it. And then all of a sudden, he goes on this crazy tear, and he hit eight in a row, and like everybody's like, "Oh my god!" Any other round, everybody would have been on their feet, but yeah. because Pete just like electrified everybody with mm-hmm. thirty-five. You just look at him, and yeah, you're right. It it, it, it gets lost in the mm-hmm. shovel. Really, it was amazing. I think uh, Trevor Story, who's not a like banger, like that's not his. He's not that big, burly, like huge dude trying to crush shots all the time. He hit one five fourteen. Like he absolutely tanked yeah. some shots. And it was it was a great derby. Yeah. It was Man, the it stadium was, incredible. was absolutely rocking when he came up. Yes, that was awesome. It was cool for him to be yeah. in his own place and, mm-hmm. and crush it and do it. So. Uh, we just talked about a lot of guys here for the Derby. So I, I, I want to ask you, who are some players in the game? And maybe it's guys who were here this weekend. Maybe it's guys who missed the cut this time. Who are some people who you think are like uh, your favorite players right now? The way they show up, the way they do it, the, their personality, whatever it is. Who do you think's killing it right now? I mean, there's so many. It's like, Every, that's yeah, like for sure. A, you know what? Um, there's a lot of like great stories just in general. Yeah. Uh, you're talking hitters. Are we talking pitchers? What are we Anything. talking? Whoever, whoever I mean, you want to go with. Because I mean, we can just rattle off like so many people that are so cool. Like what Degrom is doing yep. is amazing. Mm-hmm. What you know? How you know Scherzer? Uh, the whole you know the whole NL East. You know, with the Ronald Cunha Jr. Uh, injury is is super sad. So honestly, I'm in love with uh, the NL East. I'm in love with the NL West right now. I think that 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 like the Dodgers, Padres, and Giants, and the Giants having mm-hmm. the best record in all of baseball. Yes. I think they're it's insanely talented over there. Um, I'm also I, I I had some really cool talks with Castellanos um, and Winker and these guys, and they were mm-hmm. just talking about because like they sneaky are only like a four games back of the Brewers, yep. but yep. the Brewers have obviously the electric pitching, and they have all mm-hmm. this like. Like they they have some some dudes stuff. on the mound, but the Reds sneaky grinded yeah. and they're playing some good ball. Yes, and they because they were in the weeds and they didn't quit. And so I'm very fascinated with like all of those stories. I know I went all NL. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the A's are going to be good when they get Canna back as well. So mm-hmm. uh, if I if I'm just like naming off like the players, obviously Tatis Jr. is is super electric. Uh, I think what Brandon Crawford's doing this year, uh, Gossman's fun. De- Degrom. I feel like Crawford's honestly been like not talked about enough at all. He's right? having a it's great Quiet. season and like uh, he need he's more attention there and it's tough because it's he's this, in the, he's in the same thing like Tatis. san francisco right yeah san francisco it nobody's talking about them enough because they weren't supposed to be the story yeah right? most people are like when are they going to fall off and it's just not happening and they've They're had tons it. of injuries yep. and they keep being good and, mm-hmm. and i know i have really good ideas of why but uh, yeah, i definitely I, I have to like obviously i'm i'm you know giants like you know, yeah. they, they, my heart's very close to there. But this is the best record in baseball, and we're still kind of, like, not buying in just mm-hmm. yet. And, and that, that seems like but, the theme of the year for a lot of teams. It's like there's they're like the Mets. The Mets are, w- are winning the division, but everybody's like, man, this just doesn't – like, it, it doesn't feel like a normal year. We're like, hey, they're running away with it. The Giants, it's like, yeah, but at some point in time, right, they're going to have to do this. And it's like they're holding their own. And at some point, like, you've won enough games that it's not like all of a sudden you're going to fall off. You're you're here to some degree. Like, you got to give him respect. Mm-hmm. And it's just like the same thing like Crawford. Great season. Why isn't he getting the respect? Because he's not one of the names that everybody was pumping before the season started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the thing is, is I just I know the swing changes that he's made. And so Crawford for a long time was just he's obviously this elite elite shortstop, and he's he has so much focus and intention and so much work on defense. And he's always had crazy good hands. So, like, you watch him do his defense stuff. His hands are amazing. You watched him hit. I always called him the most unlucky hitter of all time. 
because he would barrel up the hardest, like low line drive. He would crush it, and it would be a, just a line out to the left fielder. And it was like this very difficult swing to pull off, very difficult to do. You knew his coordination. You knew he won the at-bat, but he just kept getting out. And it just mm-hmm. happened to him over and over. And finally, he's made a couple swing changes. I wanted to talk to him more about it um, because, you know, he's open. He's got the bat up. He's doing the whole launch angle thing. And now when he's hitting the ball good, it's a homer. Mm-hmm. So you're adding to hit this incredible defense and this incredible hand-eye. And I think he's going to continue to get, to do well and even get better because the more you learn it, the better you get at it. Right, so yeah. I think people are kind of like shocked. They're like, yeah, Crawford did this. No, his changes are legit. His changes are real. Their pitching staff is legit. So that stuff kind of excites me. And I think that the baseball world is just like Crawford's been Crawford for, you know, nine years, eight years, but he's different. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think that uh, there's not enough respect for the fact that people can still get better throughout an entire career. Because you might get worse at some stuff because, you know, age, you, you get worse here, but you get better in other areas. So your game can change and manipulate. Barry, however, you know, you want to think about his career, he became a completely different hitter for completely different styles. And as he lost mobility and got older and he's playing, he's 40, right? And, and the body's just not what it was in terms of his him being spry. He just started to hone in on things that he was good at. And they got better and better and better and better. And there, there's a guy like DeGrom. He's in his 30s, but this is his, maybe going to be his best season ever. Mm-hmm. Why are we so shocked that guys can keep getting better? I, I feel like in your career, do you feel like you saw that? Did you ever like feel like people weren't given an opportunity to continue to grow? Like people were written off? Yeah, I mean, not, not too much. It, it's all dependent. And like a lot of times, like, like for instance, like Ryan Vogel's song is a story where he went over to Japan and then he comes back and he learns something new. And you know, those like kind of, there's like those tweener guys and stuff, but to see, you're seeing more often like Justin Turner with the Mets yep, versus absolutely. Justin Turner with the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. He made this swing change. So there's so much new technology and, and um, the game has changed with the science and the biomechanics and the, the data. So there are people that can completely change their careers uh, by changing their swing. And I think JD Martinez is another one. He got, yeah. you know, left from, uh, the Astros. I don't know exactly. I think he went. He worked with Wallenbrock as the, as the guy, and now he's one of the best hitters of our time. He's mm-hmm. a potential Hall of Famer. You know, I know he's still in the middle of his career, but yeah. he's just doing it. It's a it, put it on the board. Nine hundred OPS minimum. Yeah. JD Martinez, and, and it's like you almost like don't even respect it. It's just like, of course he did that. I love hearing the stories about like him behind the scenes how much he's working on his swing like he records all his batting practice stuff and goes through all of it it's like amazing like the level of the student of the game he is and and then you see it like that's how he keeps getting better and he's one of the most elite hitters in the game it's amazing yeah yeah jd's good so it's fun to talk about that because we didn't even bring up shohei otani who's doing something that i think is like kind of a he's like paving the path for a lot of kids to like get an opportunity to do this you know like i know my nephew I know he's 12, but you know, there's a lot of kids around there that are like pitching and hitting and they're like, they don't want to choose one. And there's kids yeah. in college that are doing now that now you just call it the Otani. Yeah. So that's really cool. I think that he's making history. He said he wanted to make history and we saw how electric he is. God, there's so many players like baseball is actually in a really great place with yes. how much excitement is it yes. is out there. This is the, this is when we've talked about it on, on the show a few times, this is the most exciting that the game's been in a long time. And I felt like the league and, they're 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 opening up a little bit doing some more fun stuff allowing guys to be themselves a little more promoting some more of the fun of the game and then with that there's these incredible stories and like you just said the perfect thing and we actually talked to uh, Steve Garvey and he, and we were saying the same thing with him and it's that there's going to be players who can do both things and they should be allowed to like DeGrom was a shortstop I think the guy's batting like 400 this year, yeah, right? Very sneaky. <laughs> a, very, a very sneaky 400. And a couple times he had like two RBI games, and that was the only runs that were scored in the game. Mm-hmm. And he went two for three with two RBIs. And it's like, could he still hit? Like uh, Bumgarner. Bumgarner was Bumgarner always a guy crushes. where everybody was like, yeah. you know, he, he crushes. Like it exists, but everyone in now, like this era is like, you, you have to choose a thing, and we don't want uniqueness. And we – you look back in the day and you see Bo Jackson and you see Deion Sanders and you see Brian Jordan mm-hmm. and these guys are playing mul- multiple sports, right? And they're able to balance those things. Why not take the shot? And like, you have this great, amazing athlete. Maybe he can do it. And I hope the young guys can. And like you're saying that 12 year old, everybody, the best, the best hitter probably also pitches for his team until he's probably in college when he becomes a PO. Like, 
I back home trained a bunch of kids who, you know, Logan. Yep. The the kid there was 96 miles an hour. He's six four. He's now a pitcher in college, but he led his Catholic league in home runs, and he mashed and batted like 490. They're not gonna let him hit ever again, as because he can throw. And it's like, why not? And, and that's that's something I hope baseball allows back because Otani really is showing like you could mix this in. But that's also on the flip side is people are pushing more than ever for the DH in both leagues. Yes. So that might just be eliminated before we even have the opportunity to see if yeah. more kids are actually down to be Shohei Otani. <laughs> well, I think actually the DH in both leagues almost makes it more Easier. available. Mm-hmm. Because that's why Otani's able to do it. He's able sure. to DH. Yeah. He's not having to run around every yep. day and pitch. So and the body. I, I actually mm-hmm. think that the DH makes it more possible. And and here's the thing. is like if you study the mind at all, as soon as one person does it, it was like the four-minute mile. Everyone yep. would say right. this, this, this can't be done. One guy does yeah. it. So now kids are seeing it and like it's possible. It's possible. Um, so who knows? Like I know that Otani was such a talent that like teams were kind of like th- in the negotiating. He could only get paid X amount from Japan or whatever. So the reason that he kind of – he was like able to demand this. He's like if I'm coming to your team, I want to be able to do both. And, you know, organizations are putting so much money into these players mm-hmm. that they they want to make sure that they're healthy. But to just to get Otani, you had to say, you know, you kind of had to say, yes, he's just so good. And he's yeah. going to change your organization either way. Right. You know, like if you look at like a Joey Gallo, like his arm is so good and he could have done both. And he was like, I want to hit. And they're like, let's let him hit. And they watched him hit. And they're like, all right, you're a hitter. Mm-hmm. But who knows yeah. you know, what was actually possible. Yeah, like Phillips went in the other day. Right, and he does all his crazy warm ups and he mm-hmm. does all his stuff. <laughs> but his first his first pitch is a ninety four mile an hour heater that just barely missed the zone. Mm-hmm. And then he starts throwing these fifty mile an hour, fifty eight mile an hour lollipops and, and he's like just trying to get it over. But that dude throws ninety four and he just hummed it down the middle. He could probably pitch. And, and years ago, Ike Davis uh, from the Mets, Ike Davis was the closer for I think Arizona State. So he was a lefty closer through like 90, 91 miles an hour. Is that like crazy elite? No, but he's your first baseman. He matches home runs, but he, why not let him throw as a reliever? Having that ability, especially as a relief guy, if, if he's at first, his arm's not getting taxed all the time, right? He, he, he's not going to have as much violence on that elbow. Let him pitch, right? Now you don't have to keep a, a relief spot because you have a guy who can do both. You can flex that last spot up and down, take a risk on somebody. Do some other things. I think it'd be cool, and, and I, I would love to see the game open up that guys can do more stuff like that. Yeah, it, it adds a new dynamic, and honestly, it's uh, we're still like waiting to see it, it, it play out for a whole year yep. and waiting to see it you know, play out for a, a window. But either way, regardless, this season and what Otani's doing, it's like must-see TV. It's yeah. must-follow, and, uh, and, and his career in general. So that, that's, that's, that's my take on it, and like you said, how much does that help the Angels as far as, like, roster and everything? I never even thought about this. All the time. I, I say you have two guys in one, so you're able to flex out. Like, what do we need? We can have more guys. If we got to give a guy a rest day more often who plays the field, like, cool. We, we can have a guy who hits really well left. We have a guy who hits really well right because we can hold another guy on the roster because we have him. There's so much options that you have available to you by having a guy who does both things. Can I ask you guys a question? Give it. You, you brought interview up the Mets. Yeah, yeah get interview it. in reverse. You brought up the Mets. Uh, can we go through like a uh, who are you who who are you taking? Do you think all the divisions, whoever's leading now, is gonna is gonna finish at top? I'm, I'm here for this. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so you're down I, for this. I would have said so. I oh, let's first hit on the Mets. So hit on the Mets. I think the Mets will win the division because I think. Everybody in that division was ravaged by injuries, but I don't think anybody was more ravaged for a longer period of time than the Mets. They yeah, just like 60 people play for the just team. <laughs> in the last week got back two of their regular everyday starters. Like Brandon Nimmo stepping back in immediately, the lineup was different. They're scoring more runs. They're doing better, um, and, and I, I think it helped everybody across there. Conforto missed two and a half months. Mm-hmm. McNeil missed two and a half months. Carrasco still hasn't pitched, and neither has Syndergaard. And both of those guys are due back. Uh, I'm going to say I think they're going to carry the team that I felt like was most open to hunting them down would have been the Braves. And now with Acuna taking that step back, they have to make a decision. Should we be buyers and go get somebody to replace him who can substitute in some way the things that are happening? Or do you kind of eat it and go? What's your take on the NL East? 
Yeah, no, I, I like your points with Syndergaard coming back, you know, with Taiwan Walker. They got DeGrom, they got Strowman. Yeah. And you know what? Like Lindor, you're, you're going to expect is going to really get hot. They just have so mm -hmm. much talent. And the final, like the biggest thing, is not only like all of this stuff going well for them, is they have a strong bullpen as is. Yeah, so, yes. um, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to show some love. Like you're saying, you know, the NL East, I think when Acuna was there, it was like, oh, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Mm -hmm. And it always is. And yes. the Nationals had their little run, too. Yes, they were you know, making a little bit of a comeback. It was like Schwarber was going crazy. That was insane. Yeah, his stretch, like, yeah. that, that's that's sad that he, even, like, got that got that little strain. And, mm -hmm. you know, that took him out. Because I would have loved to have seen him in the home run derby. Yeah. Well, is he going to be in the home run derby? He, there, there, there was talk. Yeah. That he had said been a fun he didn't want well. to do it. Oh, really? But, and, but like, he might have, like, a couple guys dropped out. He might have been a guy who, like, he got super hot. Maybe that's a thing that would happen. But as soon as he got hurt, like it was completely a, a non-negotiable. Not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like he's a guy that you want to see one day in the home run derby because I think he hits him like he's. It's like the you know. Uh, the left-handed Pete Alonso. They both yep. just hit the ball so far that it's a spectacle to see. And like, yeah. hopefully one day he gets in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's that one. I, I like I like the Mets talk. I love talking about the Mets because they're very fascinating this year, especially. Mm -hmm. They've been the NL East is always great. Yeah. Um, but I want to hear like who of all of the divisions, like which ones do you think are going to switch? Oh, I know which one y'all going to say, and I'm not even. Uh... <laughs> I, I mean, every, everybody's going to say the same one. Um, NL Central probably. That's not for, what I thought you were going to really? say. I, I, honestly, I, I like the Reds. I think they're very gritty. And the, the Brewers, yes, they have that great uh, pitching staff. But I feel like they could close the gap, and then it's like, where are they at the end of the season? Obviously, you play in division towards the end, and is it like a, at the last second they take it, and then the Brewers are the wild card? Like, where is it? I could see it being, you know, it's because you said it's just like they're four games. Like, they could have one great series, and the other one kind of the Brewers lay off the gas, and all of a sudden it's a whole new ball game. So I don't know. I like I like watching that. Obviously, I love the Cardinals, but they're they're not like quite there right now. It's, just, it's an interesting division for me. I just like watching. Yeah, it. I think the yeah. Reds are sneaky. I think that's yeah. a good. That's not what I was. That's not the easy pick. So, mm -hmm. kudos to you for the bold yeah. pick. I love that. See, my 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 one was uh, the AL East because mm -hmm. I just the AL East just seems so out of whack. It just seems so misaligned. The Yankees are bad but good, and they shouldn't be this bad. They have so many other things, and like if they are buyers. Is there an opportunity like the, the trade that we've talked about before is is a perfect trade for them to go out and get a guy like Scherzer if the Nationals are going to say goodbye to the rest of the season trade Scherzer get a good like recoup a lot of value for him the Yankees then get a guy to pair with Cole immediately stabilize your pitching rotation your bullpen is already super strong your lineup would be able to hit but it's inconsistent and erratic and now that whole entire division becomes something because they're going to be a bloodbath, I think, in the second half because everybody can kind of play. I don't think Toronto has shown all the way up how good they can be. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to disappoint some guys at the end of the year because they're going to be gritty because they're young and they, they want to make a stamp on the on the East. Um, so I think that one's going to be more tumultuous to end the year than we expect because right now it looks like, oh, the Yankees will just fade. And I, I just don't think that that'll hold. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're going to do something to move it. But the easy answer is the, the NL West. Right, like I feel like that's what everybody yeah. wants to say, but I mean, the, I can't. The Giants have too many guys on the team who know how to win, yep. and they're willing to do like their egos are out. We're here to win baseball. Is that is that the key? Like you said, you had some little thoughts on yeah. What you what, think. What, what's is, your is the better and present the answer? I have I have a lot of things to talk about with with regards to the Giants and this, and this whole debate. Uh, the Blue Jays, by the way, potentially months away or hopefully getting their stadium back which i think is yep, i think great. the blue jays It'll are be huge are, for them you know that's tough to not be in your mm -hmm. you know in your home stadium so yeah. i know they have a crazy talented team they went for it they got springer he's healthy now get him going yep. mm -hmm. so i think the blue jays are going to be inter interesting in that mix the rays are going to be interesting in that mix oh, yes. yes who gets scherzer so with the regards to the giants the giants have built up a really strong farm system by the way they've yep. had tons of people go down Evan Longoria was on like kind of an all-star-ish pace. Yep. He was really doing a lot, but every all so many people have gone down. It's like next man up, next man up. But no matter what, the thing that I, I love about the Giants is like I know the data that's driven behind what they're doing, and I know the pitching staff there, they get the most out of everyone. When you come there, you're going to get better because this pitching staff that they have is ahead of the game. They're just they're covering every little detail and they're they're just like so good at like getting the most like what this Galfani's doing right now mm -hmm. is just absolutely amazing he's always had the talent and I'm not saying that whatever was going on with the Reds I just think that the Giants pitching staff it, it's also tough to pitch in that park 
is is really incredible that they have. Mm -hmm. And the same with the hitting and what they've done with like you know Buster's changed his swing, and when he gets super healthy, he's you know yep. he's an all star. Yeah, he's Crawford, a great season. Yeah, um, they're just they're getting more out of these like great talented people, and you're gonna get Longoria back. So to me, it's just the staff, how well they are, and and now that it's not you know COVID because they they were super strict on all the the yeah. COVID protocols. They, they had a lot more to give and they weren't giving us any time to even reciprocate it. Mm -hmm. So it was like the amount of time you had at the field last year with the Giants was like, was just enough time to stretch, go to practice and then get ready for the game. And so um, that's why I think they got a lot of gamers. I think Steven Duggar is someone no one's really talked about, but this guy is, a, is an outfielder that just defensively changes the game. He's batting if he's batting 200, he just and, and he was a huge prospect. But now they got him locked in. He's healthy. And he's got like a 900 some OPS. He cooled off a little bit there at the end, but they just they have so many weapons in the in the minor league system. They have a great staff that gets the most out of everyone, and they're I think they're they're ready to buy. You know, I think they're hot on. So Scherzer. that's the question: is will they buy? Right? I think I, so. I, I What's wanna... the move? Scherzer. Yeah. See, so that we Scherzer. We were, we were we've on been on Scherzer since because we were like, <laughs> hey, it, it looks like the situation that. Um, you, you've seen it before, like, hey, it's the last year of an older guy. Trade him and recoup. Yeah, and the in, Verlander deal. In, so, so the Verlander deal. Yeah. The, the other deal I like is, again, San Francisco Giants made it, mm -hmm. Carlos Beltran deal, right? Where when you make that exchange and you have that stuff and you get a player in back. It, it was, that, was that the Wheeler trade? Yeah, that was yes, Wheeler. Yes, it was. Right? Yes. So they got Zach Wheeler, and I think they got something else for Beltron and Beltron was in the last year of his of his uh deal. Right. So then he ended up going to the Yankees or something else, but you got a, they got Wheeler is now a super freaking stud. Yep. The Mets kind of were probably looking at themselves like probably should have done it. This is the Daniel Murphy mm -hmm. thing all over again like yeah. we we you you think your guy, you see him every day and you start thinking he's not as good as he is cuz you're like, "Ah, I see him every day and it's not as impressive, but everybody else who sees him just when he does it is like yeah everything is good what, what are you thinking mm -hmm. um that was what the, the the mets did then scherzer is the perfect guy to move because mm -hmm. he's a bulldog he'll get there i don't think he 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 loves where he's at now but i think he's just like i'll do anything to effing win and every team i think would like everyone's level goes up like yeah. the whole pitching staff everybody's a little more up your lineup a little more up like we just got effing Scherzer, and he's here because we're trying to win a title. So, he, you think the Giants are, are – that's the move? Listen, you want to send an electric shockwave through your city? Mm -hmm. Sign Scherzer. Yeah. And, and, and hear me out. The Giants, uh, they sold two, two years ago, 2019. They, they were on a run. They were, like, hot as heck, going off, doing this, like, really crazy stuff. And then they sell their bullpen. They sell Dyson. They sell, yep. you know, a couple. They, uh, I feel like they traded Melanson to the mm -hmm. Braves. They so they like kind of gutted themselves, and yeah. like that just like takes away the, yeah. the energy. And, mm -hmm. and Farhan's been doing some really smart things, and like, you know, like slowly building. I think they could have maybe bought them. There was a chance last year. No one really expected that much. It was more teams in the playoffs, but they go down to the last game. Yep. Okay. Um, this year, you know, you pick up the disc off on, and you got like you, you get, you're putting everything together. You're having the magical season. They're mm -hmm. finding ways to win. They they have the whole staff and rhythm. Um, they have they have the pieces. Like you have the best record in baseball. I think. I mean, I I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think I, I think they're on the buyer's market. I think they want a Scherzer type movement. And just imagine the pulse of the the clubhouse, the pulse of the city. Yeah. Like that's I a that. that's a shock wave. Yes. Oh yeah, listen, I I, energy I, bolt. And, and no, no one's gonna question the Giants anymore if that's the case. I'm like, hey, we brought in him now. But what? whoever now gets him, I think yeah. he's gonna be the fun yes. one to watch in the trade deadline. And yep. and obviously the Nationals, they're really close, but. He's only gonna. It's, it's a half a season. Strasburg's been down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so you think about it. It's like we can get, we can re refuel. And Scherzer likes it there. There's a chance you can always bring him back. And yeah, I think, right. I think if they're not going for it and buying, I think it's that even makes time. him like it more. You know, yep. it's like, hey, mm -hmm. thanks for you know. This is I'm I'm, I'm in I'm in my prime. We I got my to chance win. to go get a ring. Yeah. Like that's what you're about. It come when back you're after we'll reload right with the trade that we come, do, and then let's go. That's gonna be fun if he goes to the Yankees or yeah. who yeah. knows, like maybe the Mets. You never know. But like that's I, gonna be that the, the be second half. Uh, here's another thing. I don't think the Mets could do that right now. All right, the Mets at this point, if they did that, you you got Stroman, Walker, Degrom already there. 
You got Car- Carrasco and Syndergaard coming. Okay, back. okay, okay. Yeah. So, so we're like, but <laughs> hear this though with the with the sorry to interrupt you. No, but get with it, the get Giants, it, please interrupt all. The they time. have yeah. no starters coming back next year. No starting pitcher coming back next year. They're all gone. Every so no. much is coming off the books. T- uh, Webb, Walker. maybe Webb. Who? Are you talking about the Mets? The, no, the Giants. The Giants. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The Giants oh, have yeah, not yeah, a single yeah. starting pitcher coming oh, back. Really? Coming off of their books it, uh, this year is, is Crawford, Belt, Posey, Cueto. And then, like, obviously, Gossman. Um, the, all of them. Disco Fani's on a one year wow. deal. Um, everyone. Oh, man. So, so that Woody's on a one year deal. It. They have no one coming back. So, like, they're in a, this weird window. Right, like what? What, what do you, what you have on to? That? You have to go for it. No, like I actually think the reverse. I think that that makes it more challenging. If you go all in on Scherzer, you're going to do what you said before. They build up this big uh, cache of players in the minor leagues. They have this great development program. If you're going to go for Scherzer and you're going to have to compete against a whole bunch of teams who look at Scherzer the same way we're all talking about mm-hmm. him now, that means you're going to give up a lot to get Scherzer. And it's probably not going to be just a guy like Wheeler. It's going to be a situation that was more like when R.A. Dickey got traded. When R.A. Dickey got traded to the uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays from yes. the Mets, the Mets picked up Syndergaard and uh, uh, Travis Darno. Yep. And Darno was the big piece. Syndergaard was a high upside number two pitcher, mm-hmm. right? And they crushed that trade. Like, they outvalued that forever. But Dickey still went there and was a dominating pitcher for a few years, which gave them what they were looking for. But you're going to take a lot out of the top of your, your, your development plan to do that. Would you do that when next year you don't know who comes back? Because you're now the best team in the league. Let's say you, don't, you, do, you do go all in, and you make it, and you get there, and you have a great season. You're either going to have to pay all these guys to come back to you, or you're going to end up messing with chemistry and having to balance it all back out next year anyway. And what was the point? We Hold got up. rid of a whole bunch of prospects, and we have we we we've ruined our chemistry. Reel, reel it back already. Give it to All me. All of those people are like, no matter whether you get Scherzer or not. Yeah. You don't have them coming back, right? And and and. Well, part, they could. Well, you don't at, no at this moment. Yeah. At this right. moment. Right. So, but you have so much money coming off of the book. So next year, the Giants are going to be like, they're going to be Spanish. buyers. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot happening out there. So. My thing is, like, you win a World Series, you have a ton of money coming back. You are attracting a lot of the guys that are, you know, and Farhan's been a master at, like, at getting the Gossman and then turning him yeah. into, like, he's, like, he's one of the best pitchers in the game right now. Yeah, absolutely. One, you know, you can put him up against anyone. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I, all of these guys, Discalfani right now, 10 wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've, I've mentioned him a lot. Johnny Cueto's pitching good. He's giving him a chance. So, he's found, this staff is kind of building a reputation of, hey, like, if we go here, I can like have a good de- I can have a good year. I can get with these guys yeah, and I can yeah. build it up. So, so they're gonna have a lot of money. They're gonna be on a World Series winning team potentially, or or, or team that went for that. Yeah. And there's gonna be a lot of hype and a lot of money. So no matter what, whether you buy or sell, the pieces that that most likely the Giants are trading for that, if they're trading, is like you have a you have a Joey Bart who's hitting 330 in AAA. I know I'm really in, invested in these That's Giants, cool. and I'm great. going ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You have a Luciano. We all the time are like, oh, man, we're talking about the Mets. We're talking too about much. Way we're too big much. Mets fans. <laughs> all right, all right. We have a Luciano who I don't, you know, I, I – you don't want to see him go, but this is a shortstop with like tremendous upside that's that's killing it, super young. But, but couldn't those two Ramos. guys? But two, couldn't those guys be part of that foundation next year? Luciano is probably a, a yearish, a two years away. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. But, and he's going to be a long. He's going to be really good for someone for a long time. But so Bart, three thirty, triple A, second overall pick. He's, Grinder. He's this yeah. close to being the guy. He's the first guy to go in your in your opinion from uh, like if you're getting Scherzer, like, yeah, if you're getting saying, Scherzer, like if you're getting you're gonna have to lose a Ramos, a Bart, a uh, Luciano. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. At I'm least just one of your top a, three. Yeah. At least one of your top three is gonna so, probably but, have to go. But let's say this, like, like obviously the Giants shot the shot. There's teams that shoot the shot and yep. don't hit, right? Yeah, you for you sure, go for Beltran, it didn't work out. Yep. But. The, like there were injuries that happened, right? You yep. can't control that. Yep. But when when things are healthy and things are happy, I don't know. Uh, there's other people out there, and there's other trades to be made. But yeah, uh, I do. I just think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. What's another? Let's go Boston Red Sox. Rafael Devers and how many RBIs he has in his mm. offensive season. Devers, y'all, y- yeah. y'all aren't buying the Red Sox to hold the the AL East. So I, I, yeah. I, I'm not. I think that that division's going to end up getting. I think it's going to get distorted. And I I. I don't know why, but the AL East just always seems to be like that. Like, you get to the All-Star break, you think you know what you know, and then the season ends, and you're like, oh, it's the Rays again. 
Like <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's yeah. very likely because they are yeah, they are very they they have a lot in the and, tank. And rumor on the streets, Glasnow is coming back. Glass, He's coming back. Glasnow. For, yes, we. So we I, have a, I, we I got have an inside I, source. So <laughs> like, there's an inside source. He that, didn't have Tommy John. No. So we might be breaking this to some degree. I don't know if I should say all this. Um, so the 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 comp that's currently going is a former Yankees pitcher who pitched for very many years with a partial UCL tear and had no problems. And I think he looks like he's going to try to go that route in six weeks from now. He might be making well, like his return like, I mean, or that, sooner. There's another shockwave through uh, through the, the clubhouse right there. That's right? Glasgow if, comes if, back. If cause, he, cause it, like, at that point, just let it tear, right? A partial tear, you get to the point, it's going to be the same thing. If you try to pitch with it and it tears, it tears. If it never tears, that's weird. That's a weird yeah. one. That's a tough one. Yeah. But the fact that he hasn't already had it, I thought that he just like had already been doing that, you know. Mm-hmm. And so if he hasn't had it, then there's no reason for him to wait all that amount of time. Right. You get it you done get, as soon as you can, so you get back as soon as you exactly. can. So that tells me that he's he's gonna he's trying to make a yeah, go at it. It makes exactly. sense. And if he's trying to make a go at it, and he, that's the decision that they're going with. Uh, he he's a really good pitcher. Is it going to affect his pitching? I'd assume always yes, right? Because pain is going to change how everybody acts on sure. the field, right? But the best athlete, athletes in the world are also the best compensators. They're able to take the pains and the strife and the things that their body is feeling, and they're able to still be nasty, right? Like we were talking about the high school guys going and swinging the bat. That one kid, he, he hit a ball. It, it had to have gone like 475. He crushed one. Mm-hmm. But that was one. Right, and like the, he, so many of the other ones land on the grass. His perfect shot was just really good. Yeah. Is this what we're gonna get? Like his, he, he's not gonna be that, or is he gonna be able to compensate his way around and just still being a stud? If he is, the Rays are not out of this, and they could be buyers. And do they load up a little bit of juice to help compensate for him not being fully? That changes that whole division. And like you said, Springer, Springer missed most of the first half. And this is a guy who's a guy, right? Like, this is a difference-making player who a team was missing for a large portion. And they stuck around enough around 500 to, hey, we get we catch fire. Vlad, he's learning how to be a pro. Like, he's a stud, mm-hmm. right? And he's coming around as a young guy. He is now an impact bat that is very high impact. I, I just I don't know if, if Boston is that team. I'm surprised that they were this good to start to begin with. Devers is a stud, though. Devers is a stud. I, I love Devers as a player. Yeah. Another. I mean, Xander Brogarts, Devers, J.D. Martinez, and they got a bullpen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Barnes. Oh, so just a trade that I know everyone was talking about, like, today in general. Chris Bryant. Yes. Do you think he's on the Cubs at the end of the season? Man, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, he's kind of been on the trade block for a long time. Right. And, uh, is this his last year? Yep. Mm-hmm. $17 million is his total salary. Yeah. So at this point in time, you're probably trading for somewhere in the ballpark of $7, 8000000 million to remain the rest of the season. So that's not really a big buy for a guy who's an impact bat for you and can play a little bit of a few different positions. Yeah, yeah with the way where, where the Cubs are right now, uh, I think there's a good chance that, that they move Chris Bryant. I think I think that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at looking at it right now, you got, you're going to give it a little bit of time. You're going to – you're gonna shop around everywhere, but who's who's on the market looking for a third baseman like that? Mets. Well, yeah, the beginning oh. of, at the beginning of the season, the trade that they asked for was Chris Bryant for Francisco Alvarez, and then I think something else too, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And the Mets were like, no, because we need we want this guy for a while. It's not worth it for us. Um, we're fine with JD Davis, but then yes. JD Davis got hurt, and then Jonathan VR came up and said, "I'm gonna take over now." And but <laughs> but JD Davis is making his way back. Might yeah. come back. But third base for them is a thing. Uh, a right-handed bat in the lineup that can that can crush is a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bryant would fit in nicely. They also have unlimited cash if they want to, right? <laughs> Stephen Cohen will pay anything he wants. Like he just decide, cool, I'm gonna do this, and it's done. And he'll pay him a lot of money next year if he mm-hmm. asks for it. So like I don't think that they have a worry. They did it with 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 Lindor, right? Like cool, we'll trade stuff, fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then That's we'll give be... him the biggest contract mm-hmm. in the game. Like cool. Say no more. I'm super excited that I get to watch my favorite team growing up be great because I'm worth like thirty billion dollars. Like <laughs> that is so awesome. It's gotta be so fun to be a Mets fan right now. Oh, dude, that's, a, that's a very we're in New York, so like the Steinbrenners forever. Like, would they'll lose money? 
Like, they don't care. Mm-hmm. Now you're seeing the Yankees, like, tighten the purse strings. Like, hmm, we, we, we got to stay under this threshold. We're not going to go. We're not going to spend all this money to go get a guy. And the Mets are now, like, unlimited money. And, like, Yankees fans are already, like, no. We need to do Steinbrenners. You guys, we don't care if you guys go broke. You're not allowed to let the Yankees ever spend less than <laughs> mm-hmm. the Mets, but yeah, it's it's been it's been weird because we're we're like a poverty franchise for like a long time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's no, no money for you guys. Like, yeah. hey, we're oh, you're hurt. Cool, you're permanently hurt. We're gonna collect the insurance money. Our our salary is X, but in reality, we're not paying Cespedes a dollar. Mm-hmm. He counts thirty million dollars. He's happy because he makes his money. We're happy because insurance covered twenty nine point five million dollars that we didn't have to pay. So we paid him 500k this year, and they didn't really spend money, and that's how they got around. Like Jason Bay hurt, they got yeah. collected on insurance. David Wright hurt, they collected on insurance. Robbie Cano, they're collecting on insurance. Uh, Cespedes, they collected on insurance. Like the Mets have had a big payroll, but weren't actually paying anybody. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's actually kind of crazy. And now yeah. they're paying people, but guys are coming off the books who are fake money. So like, there's they're going to have a lot of like. Even Strowman's a free agent, so he's nineteen mm-hmm. million dollars. He's coming off, right? Um, I think, but uh, Batan says ten million dollars. He's coming off. Yeah. Um, this is the last year that any Cespedes money is on there, right? Yes, I believe so. So that's eight million or ten million dollars mm-hmm. that it got shrunk down to. So that's like forty million dollars. Is Cano with us next year? Cano, they might be able to just buy. I think Cohen's going to buy him out. Okay, that makes sense. I think Cohen's going to just hand him a check so he's off the salary cap Yeah. so that they're not going into the thing, and then they'll have $70 wow. million dollars to spend. So then the question becomes, they're going to sign at least one guy big. So is it going to be Syndergaard, and he's going to get a big jump in salary, mm-hmm. or are they going to go shopping for another guy? Well, they also and, have to sign Conforto, too. And they're going to – yeah, and, well, that's another yeah. conversation. <laughs> and, and then what other person do they want to bring in to, to jack it up? A guy like Chris Bryant at third base might make sense, but – Again, we know the Mets. I I maybe watched more of the minor leagues than mm-hmm. than he does. Um, Vientos was the first round pick three years ago. He's twenty one, um, and he's mashing. He's got like a nine seventy OPS in in double uh, A. Nice. Uh, so he looks good. And then Brett Beatty, who was their first round pick the year after that, also a third baseman. Um, he just got moved to Binghamton uh, from uh, High A. And he's also a third baseman who mashed. He had, he had, again, high 900 OPS, batted 330, looks great. Um, so they're good at third, so I don't know if they want to. Like, they now have that problem where it's like, J.D. Davis could get us by for another year, and yeah. then we'd have the guy up. McCann can cover uh, catcher for the next two years, and then 19-year-old Alvarez, who looks like a stud, can be up. Um, but the Mets have a lot of money, and I think Bryant – does end up a Met. Okay. And, and I think that's the move they end up making. Mm-hmm. I want to hear, uh, and, and that de- that definitely makes sense. And and a lot of times the ones that make sense don't always work out, but maybe it yeah. does. Hopefully, sometimes it does. Mm-hmm. We really haven't hit much on, on the Padres and the Dodgers. I don't think they have anything they can do. Well, yeah, but like second half, like vibes, like thoughts. like I think like <sighs> Dodgers have bad energy for obvious reasons. I'm not going to get into it on yeah. the podcast right this second. It's, a, it's, it's a tough – yeah. They're, that's they're, that's some heavy stuff that I don't to, have enough info stuff on yet. to deal with. Yeah. But that whole team – that's the Padres then. That's Padres. when – the Padres, I don't think, have a trigger to pull because they pulled all their triggers getting getting Snell and doing all the stuff and making all their moves. Do you think they're good enough to make a move with what they got? I think they're good enough to be a great team, and I think that there's a possibility that all three of those teams make it into the extended playoff, right? Like that oh, – by the way, I should probably know this. We're having an extended playoff again this year, or is it, it's just the regular I playoffs? I think, I think it's, it's the regular, regular playoffs. playoffs this year. I think there, this year, I think I this year, there's there's seven teams. I know we should know this. I, or or six. No, I think it's back to normal. There was there was talk in the beginning of the season. Well, well there, there is, is six teams. So even six regardless, teams. Yeah. at six teams, you're going to get the or, division right, winner, and both of those two could be the wild cards. No, it's right. five teams. It's five teams. It's two wild cards and then three division winners. Yes, that's yes. right. Yes. Yep. So I. I so yeah, their division winner and their two teams, they could have. Yeah, they could all. They, all, they, they, could, all, they I, could be the two. Yes, that's where that's that where my head's sense. at. Yes. So so I think that they're they're that good at this point. You have the info. You have the data. It's back to normal. Back to normal. Okay. Um. So they 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 yeah. might dominate that every single spot because NL East isn't sending two. 
there's going to be a winner and then a bunch of people with mediocre records. Yep. Right? Central's so even, probably the same. Mm-hmm. So those three teams, if they keep just – if they if they're, from this point forward they're around 500 each of them, they're the teams. Right? Yep. So then you're in there. And I think watching the Padres play against the Mets, I'm unimpressed with the team as an overall thing. I think there's a lot of guys there who are really, really solid baseball players. But I think they had really, really hot starts. Like, I like Pham. I think he's a, a great, like, dude, player, guy you want on your team. I don't think if he's one of your top three impact bats that your team is going to be able to hang with some of the teams in the postseason. Um, and that's that's my feel. I think um, – I, I see, I can, I can disagree. That's – I, and, and just play devil's advocate here. For sure. But, like, a lot of times, like, in playoffs, you, you just need, like, you need gamers. You need yeah. fighters. Fam's a fighter. Mm-hmm. But sure. the main thing you need is you need a number one and a number two starter, and you need three back-end bullpen. If you have, so once you get to playoffs, like, getting in, you got to get to the playoffs. Yep. And then the way you win in playoffs is you have your number one and your number two are the, are the dudes. So, like, so you can't say like like well, at least I don't think you can go like you know bec- you know they have Fam and like they have Tatis they have Machado they have Cronenworth yeah. they got they yeah. got the offense there's not right. even a question it's yeah. like you Darvish you know uh, who's their next guy who's their bullpen yeah. right like that's gonna be like what's gonna take a team like for instance when the Nationals won it it's like you got Soto you got Eaton who had a great year mm-hmm. you got Howie Kendrick who's a crazy leader yes. you got these like veteran guys that are primed that. You know, they're kind of, like, uh, not spoken about, but, like, you know, Kendrick hit, like, 330 that year. Mm -hmm. And then you got Scherzer and Strasburg, and you got Hudson in the back end of that bullpen. Mm -hmm. You had Doolittle who had a hot year. So, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's, to me, the Nationals in 2019 is a team you study, and you go, this is, like, how you build a team built for the playoffs. Well, that was the Mets in 2015, right? The Mets in 2015. DeGrom and and Syndergaard. DeGrom, Syndergaard, Matt Harvey. Yeah. Right? And they they beat the Dodgers and and impacted the Dodgers' ability to go, and nobody expected it. And the Dodgers, that was the start of that empire of who they became. But, again, like so you bring up Tatis and Machado, and I think they're amazing players. Right? They're they're top players in the game, for for sure. And Cronenworth. Yep. My my thing is, if if, if we're getting to the point that we get to the – so again, I'll go. So I'll go, do you I'll go think line by line? I, I honestly, and again, I'm I'm a Mets fan. Tell me I'm crazy. I'd rather take the Mets lineup than I take the Padres lineup. Go look at the numbers, and it's not even remotely close. Absolutely, I know. Not even remotely because close. because none of other, them have played. But Nimmo's batting three thirty, right? And like that's the leadoff hitter, and that's not the guy. Lindor's catching back on to who he was, and if he's that guy, that's different. Conforto didn't play for two and a half months. Jeff McNeil bats three hundred every single year like clockwork. Brian McCann is a great hit. The Mets team is deeper than Padres team, and they beat them routinely since they've played them. And they're not healthy when they played them. So, yeah, you can look at the numbers for sure. It's not close. But that's what it was, not what it will be. And my problem is they're not going to get better. They are who they are. Yeah. And other teams are going to get better. And if that happens, will the West even have enough? Like the Dodgers are that team, but now you don't have the top two guys. Like you have your top Bueller, two. Urias, you have Walker they, Bueller. May going down was also a big hurt yes. to them mm-hmm. as well. But hear me out. Like the Mets, the strength is what you want your strength to be. You can't argue with me that the Mets lineup right now is as good as the Padres' offensive lineup. Tatis versus Lindor today, right now, is not very. It, 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 oh, it's, it's a big. Well, it's a big difference. Are we talking to, like if we're talking today, right now? Li- you're talking lineup, but but what I want in the playoffs is pitching. And when you go to Grom, sure. Stroman, you know Walker, and then you go to Carrasco, your bullpen, Carrasco, Cindergard, yeah. you know, like, and then you go to your bullpen, and like pitching, be- good pitching beats good hitting for sure. But, but you were talking about Fam with the Padres and like the lineup and stuff. To me, it's like like the offense is going to be there. It's like ooh. so you're worried about the pitching for the Padres a little bit. Yeah, I, and, I, and I can and see like that. They, you know, they got they signed you know Darvish. Has, did Snell get hurt? Because I haven't even heard that much about him. Well, he de- he was not having a great start yeah. for sure. It was not what they were. And hoping he's for. always been a really good like I don't even say really good. He's he always was, been a good pitcher. He's had moments of elite status. He was but I, I don't think he's like 
that this top is, tier. Here's another question. I know the Mets might have beaten the Padres heads up, but who has a better record? Do we have a, a stat person? Oh, here? I'm just them. curious. It's, it, it's Padres. Padres, Padres yeah. have a better record. The, yeah, they've played more games also. More games. But yeah. like so percent, winning listen. percentage. It's pretty close, it's, though. Yeah, right? it's yeah, it's and the Mets close. do have upside. So I'm not then, I'm not attacking. I'm yeah, actually no, no. on Did the Mets. This is just fun I'm conversation. All absolutely. absolutely. Listen, I have no animosity on it. I this is I love, more I love fun the passion. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, I again I'm a Homer Mets fan and I, I know that. So sometimes I look at it and I'm like, damn, I gotta really like look at this entire situation. Petey Alonso out here winning the home run derby, right? Crushing the ball. He's started to look different. Again, Conforto, if you look at OPS over a career between Nimmo, Conforto, and Bryce Harper, they're all within 10, 15 points of each other from an OPS standpoint. Harper hits more home runs. He's always has. Both Conforto and Nimmo hit more doubles. Uh, when you look at those players, they have similar things, but those two guys don't have the same names, but both of them are first-round picks who who banged. Conforto, before he did that one year where he separated his shoulder, he had 28 home runs in like 110 games. He was going to hit close to 40 home runs. I think that it's the because the Mets were so hurt, we're, we're downplaying what it is, and I think the Mets have room to trade. I don't know what the what the Padres can do to upgrade their team, and the 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 Dodgers have already done so much. To me, that's why I don't think the West is the division that changes. Yeah. I think it's San Fran because San Fran's got all the upside to. Hey, mm-hmm. we didn't know we were going to be here, so we have assets to move. These guys already made their play yeah. and thought they were battling each other and forgot about this other dude who came up and is actually taking the girl yeah. home. Like, yeah. <laughs> you guys were fighting over the wrong thing. Yeah. Like, nah, I'm going to get her, I'm going to get her, and the dude's walking out like, see you later, guys. Like, so it really comes down to, like we were, we were talking about before, those three guys, those three teams are, are going to make it in some capacity. Yeah. It's just a matter right. of what's I the mean, order. And then it's who, who makes the move to – Go from hey we're gonna be the wild card team hey we're gonna go win this division series yeah. and keep moving. I still think like obviously you can't you can't cut any of those teams out. It's gonna be no, no, absolutely not. it's gonna be not. an exciting second yes. half for sure. A lot of these divisions, I think the the NL Central and the Brewers are gonna be fun to watch mm-hmm. and the Reds and like the, NL's the nasty. sneaky the sneaky Reds. Um, you know I we haven't even talked about the AL Central at all because I think that one's as basic like as you can get yeah. like the White Sox are legit they're gonna yep. get, I think they're gonna continue to get better yeah there was someone, gonna, brought, oh, someone I want to bring up about the Mets that y'all haven't talked at all about that I think's a great hitter he's having a rough year and I'm sure y'all are watching it closer than I am but what's going on with McNeil because I think he's an amazing player I, I have a, a theory get, get it I think well in previous years and they've talked about it a million times his approach has always been other way. And it looks like this year he's kind of pressing to like go bigger, try and hit more home runs. It just looks like he's kind of pulling he's off not a little bit. His game. Yeah, he's not doing his thing, and that's that's why his average is always the way it is. He was never looking for that, so his approach just seems different. And I might totally be completely wrong, but just from seeing it, I've heard Keith Hernandez talk about it a bunch, and that just kind of seems like what it is because normally his baseline is just like, hey, I'm still going to put a great piece on it, and it's probably going to be at least a single, and that kind of just keeps the train moving and kind of keeps him in a groove, and it feels like he's trying to do too much, and he's not getting into that rhythm, not being able to find his swing, and he's not p- producing it the normal way he has. He, he's still getting everyday playing time? Well, he's so got, he was injured that, also. He missed two months Yeah, with a hamstring injury, so there's been inconsistency. There was inconsistency with the whole lineup before mm-hmm. because guys just kept getting lopped off. So then you had a situation where the Mets trade a dollar for Cam Maben and bat him third, right? Like that's where the Mets were at one point in time, and they were still winning games. Because they're pitching. Because their yeah. pitching was great, but like the team scrapped runs together. They were bunting mm-hmm. down, like guys would shift. They're playing to They'll win. Drop at this a bunt. Point. Yeah. They were doing all the things to like, yo. We have no options. We got to do anything to win. We get scrap claw, and now that same scrappiness has come in, and the the guys who are healthy are back. Pete missed. Uh, 10 days, 14 days. Oh, did he? Yeah. Because okay, okay. yeah, he, he had a thumb. sprained thumb. Yeah. So, I definitely think that there's there's more in the tank from Pete. And, like, he oh, brings definitely. an energy. And, mm-hmm. and that's – McNeil, to me, honestly, like – and I don't know enough about, like, his relationship with Rojas and everything else. But I don't feel like he – you look at it and it's odd that they've treated him the way they treat him. The entire season, this entire year, they've treated him like he's their, like, seventh best, eighth best guy. I mean, there was talk that the Mets were trying to trade for Adam Frazier. So, this, which means that they're putting somebody at second base yeah. who hasn't been the player lifetime that Jeff's been. He's having a great year this year. Sure. But then does that mean you're moving Jeff over to third? Like, Where you already have two to three we, guys already? Yeah, so like, it's very odd. It, it, and it looks almost like... Remember they had the, the raccoon situation with Lindor, Lindor and McNeil? 
I like so so you don't you didn't see that so cool stuff. really so they had a fight in the in the uh, in the clubhouse. dugout mid game mid game they're they're chirping at each other in the middle of the field it goes into the 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 dugout they go down the hall guys all run down the hall you see them all in the cameras inside there somebody looks down the hall and goes yo 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 they all run down the hall come back rumor is McNeil and Lindor fighting. Right? No, no, it's just a raccoon. When I saw a giant rat my first time in New York, I was telling Jeff I thought it was a rat. He said it was a raccoon. He was, And it was this stupid thing. And it was yeah, big, awful. like, <laughs> why would you say it? And it's like, just say, hey, we're keeping it in the clubhouse. But from that moment, McNeil's been treated differently. I don't know if that's real. But since that moment, they have not, like, I don't know what it is. Does Lindor like playing with somebody else at second base? Does he feel like he has a better rapport with somebody else? It, then McNeil's been batting sixth or seventh in the lineup. And, like, routinely in the past, like, he's hit, you know, like, second. Because he's a guy who can control the bat, move guys over, do all this stuff. High batting average. Like, I get on base percentages being and all that stuff. But, like, your, your two-hitter being able to hit 315 is good if you have a guy who gets on base in front of him. So, like, you want a guy who can hit and get on base. The hit tool's there for him. But he's not there. He's he's batting. He's got no protection. So now all of a sudden he's not protected. He is at the bottom of the lineup. He's got James McCann batting behind him, and everybody's like, "Yeah, you know, James is a great hitter, but like I don't fear him like I used to fear Pete being behind Jeff. I don't fear him like I fear Conforto being behind Jeff. And I don't know if that's a relationship thing. So I, again, I have no idea. But yes, something with Jeff and the whole situation. Just doesn't seem right this year. Mm-hmm. And now you're That's looking at the Chris Bryant trade and all these things. And who moves? Who's out of the lineup? Who's the guy who's gone? And it's not the outfield. They're stuck there. They're, they have their spots. Mm-hmm. They're not moving anybody there. That's Frankie a, and Pete are there. Yeah. Also, our, I love our pickup with Pilar. Yep. He has been Pilar's amazing. Pilar's amazing. He's a grinder. Yeah. yeah. He's, you know, the Mets is just getting hit in the face and coming back as soon as you can. Mm-hmm. Um He's a guy that that's uh, you know as, as a as a baseball player that is super fun to watch. You just respect the hell out of him, and uh, you know how hard he goes out there and how how much he competes. And everyone, mm-hmm. you know, when I when I came to the Giants, I know he was there in 2019. When I came back in 2020, just said the best things about him. Like he just wants to play every day, and, mm-hmm. and like his words were like, "I'm not my face will heal, but like not being able to get out there and play with my guy, mm-hmm. you know, with the team. It's just a spirit and it's a message." And like. Yep. You know that it commands respect. So mm-hmm. like, you're right. You know, Pilar's pretty, pretty amazing guy. Yeah, and it, it says a lot too about. You know, we were talking about some little issues with the Mets clubhouse, but I think overall their culture has really helped them continue through all these injuries and things. And I personally, just as a huge Mets fan, like I have never wanted to play for the Mets more, just specifically because it seems like the culture in their clubhouse is like second to none. Like I, I you always see that the winning teams have you know good chemistry, but it feels like theirs is just different. And the guys they're talking about though are Pilar, right? Pilar, yeah. Like, everybody's calling it the Alars, yeah. In New York, the bench right? mob thing. And, that and it's the bench going. mob, and yeah. it's the guys that they don't like. That's where the culture's been, mm-hmm. and like that. And now Nimmo comes back, and like everybody's rallying around him, and that's the thing. Like that's that's why I look at like the situation with Jeff, and it just nobody seems to look at him and be like Jeff's our guy. Like Jeff's a leader. Jeff's pushing it forward. Like there doesn't. That's still like Lindor's taken over that de facto. But, like, Pilar, Villar, the bench guys have really been like, we'll be your spirit. And I think that that's changed and reshaped the Mets as a whole in terms of internally how everybody functions. Um, Speaking to, like, heart, soul, everything else, and loving playing and getting back, what's it like transitioning from playing to not playing? You know, um, I, I think it's it's a different journey for everyone, so I don't think you can speak for everyone. Sure. Yeah, well, what's yours you, been like? You know, yeah, like, yeah, for me, it, it, it's obviously like you love playing and it's, it's emotional, but I also am like super appreciative. Like I'm the kid that like every day in the big leagues was, a, uh, you know, a dream come true. And I'm very thankful for my 14 years. And I had made a decision and a, and, a, and a mindset like I was going to play as hard as I could. I don't know how long that's going to last. And uh, I'm going to pl- yeah, play until they rip the jersey off me. But eventually, like, you know, playing as hard as I did, and I probably swung too many swings than I should. And I always swung as hard as I could. And right now, with my body, the the I don't want to like blame injuries or anything, but I'm just not healthy enough to mm-hmm. necessarily do it correctly. And, yeah. 
And so, like, honestly, I'm, I'm loving being a fan. The, tra- the transition has been super fun. Uh, I've, I was a player and a fan at the same time. Yeah. And, like, getting to sit here and talk the podcast, talk the, the home run derby, mm-hmm. having the baseball barista podcast that I get to do, talking to the college people with, uh, you know, Perfect Game College Baseball, ESPNU Radio. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, still feel so connected to the cocoon of baseball. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, my heart couldn't be more full. I get to spend time with my wife, talk baseball. I play video games on Twitch, like Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons. So, mm-hmm. like, my, if my body felt good, I would be dying to play. I would go play anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, I always wanted to go play in maybe Korea or Japan yeah, or wherever. Yeah. See a but, like, culture. to, like, the way that my body feels, I left it all out there. Yeah, and that's great. I'm very fulfilled and I'm very thankful. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm so happy to still be in the baseball family. Yep. And I'm enjoying it just as much as a fan. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I do want to go play, but. Um, but when it like literally just hurts me to think about mm-hmm. it right now. <laughs> I feel like like I love like your transition has seemed so seamless because you were a person who was engaging and doing stuff beforehand, and baseball has always needed to do that more. You see it in the other sports, so like it, it's a very smooth like okay, all of a sudden a guy's a national analyst like Shaq immediately is on everything, mm-hmm. right? And, and he always had this big giant personality. Um, you've shown your personality who you are, right? Like you talk about it like, hey, Dungeons and Dragons, this is what I'm playing, this is what I'm doing because I like it. It's what I enjoy doing. Like I'm going to stream, I'm going to do this stuff because this is my stuff. And you opened the door to be like, here's all this stuff. And I feel like a lot of guys are like, you know, I'm going to show this facade of who I am. And it, it creates that separation. And because you were so I am me, when you were done, you were I and me, and it was seamless for mm-hmm. everyone. They were a fan of you, the person, as much as you, the player. Do you feel like that 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 makes sense? I do, I do, and I appreciate you saying that. And I think that it's a good message for kids out there, people playing the game today. You know, a lot of the things that I like aren't necessarily the most popular things. And a lot of people are like, "That's weird," and I'm like, "I get it." You know, but this, I, you can only be yourself, and like the freedom to be yourself is the ultimate freedom. Yeah. And and the other thing is, is like, like I said, is I was a fan as well as a player, and so like I, I think just treating people with kindness and and literally just being yourself and letting them know that like you know just because. I'm not saying anyone thinks they're better than anyone, but just like realizing that every person is special. And we're no matter what you do, whether you're the greatest baseball player, worst baseball player, you know, you go and do accounting, you go, you're a police officer, firefighter. We all like have our little purpose and just like appreciating and loving. So to me, it's like the thankfulness to the fans, connected to the fans, and, and understanding that that connection matters has been the coolest part of the experience. It's the relationships even with your teammates. Um, you know, that's that's what I've always loved about baseball. I've loved it's it's fun to sit here and talk and, and analyze and see who's going to be the best. You know, yeah. did y'all have picks before the season started on who was going to win the World Series? Yep. Yeah. Who would y'all pick? The Mets. I picked the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> y'all both picked the Mets. Who are they no, playing I think against? Actually, I, you said, I, I didn't. I think you said. I want to. I want a reshot at who I picked no, at the I beginning of the year. It wasn't the Blue Jays. I, I said the Maybe Dodgers. The Dodgers. Dodgers. I said yeah, the Dodgers because I said a, it was right after uh, Bauer signed, probably. Okay. Yeah. And I and I said at that point in time, I'm like. Un- until games start, I can't unseat somebody who went and won and then went out and was like, you know what we'll do to top this off? We'll spend $40 million a year on a pitcher who even if I don't think he's as good even before like knowing about other things, I, he, I, I never felt like he was that player. Make your money, man. Do your thing. More power to you. He still upgrades a team. Like he still makes it that you're collecting more infinity stones. Like I, I don't need all of them to still have four and be mm. excellent. Yeah. And so I, I was, I was in on the Dodgers because I said like, I don't want to be a homer. Um, and still, even now, I look at it and I go, I don't foresee the Mets winning. But like, the more the season progresses, the more I start looking and go, the NL is just really effing hard. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, even if the teams who we lined up right now all make it. Where's the easy game? Like, where's like, a, oh, I definitely know. Like, f- five plays two. That's not going to be an easy game. There's like, no easy games. It's, nope. it's, it's big leagues. It's baseball. Mm-hmm. It's major league baseball. But I think your pick holds up a little bit more than mine. You know, you don't, you shouldn't feel bad about the Dodgers. The Dodgers no, still yeah. could could run off. Mm-hmm. That's a good pick. Who that did you have? Be a pick. And you had the Mets? I had the Mets, yes. Okay. So, I, and did you have who they were playing against? I'll, I'll, I'll get to my pick. It's fun. Mine's, mine's kind of sad right now, though. It's, 
I don't remember who I picked. It might have. I'll tell you why I picked who I picked. I want to re-pick though. A halfway point pick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't remember who I picked. I also don't remember who they played. Okay. I had White Sox versus Braves, and I had the Braves winning it all. Wow. But, so so, but hear me out. Hear dark me out. Day, dark we, day. We actually we had a whole conversation. Like, go, please go. Please we go. Had, go. We go had ahead. a whole. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Obviously, the, the Braves and the Dodgers had an incredible series. Could have gone either way last year. Like, yep. insane series. Uh, loved watching that. But they added Charlie Morton, who had an incredible spring training. He didn't give up a run in spring training. This dude's been doing it for a while. He's a mm-hmm. dude. He's won the World Series. He stepped up in Game 7, stepped up for the Rays, was just nasty. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got the dude. They also added Drew Smiley, who I played with, had an insane year with the Giants. I'm like, they, just similar to like what you're saying, you know. To me, I, I, I know that no matter how good you are, it, it, winning the World Series takes a toll. It's a soul. Like, your soul has to be invested. It's a heart. It's a soul. It's a passion. It's a fight beyond mm-hmm. fight. And the Dodgers last year had a lot of things going for them because all of the, like, drama of the feeling like they got robbed of a World Series they should have won. And, yeah. like, there's energy. There's a spirit behind what takes you over the hump yeah. and that like to me is like not taking away like the performance that they had but they felt like they were robbed of a world series and they weren't going to be robbed again yeah you watch like when boston won and they had like the boston strong and like you mm-hmm. feel this energy this spirit that great that becomes stronger than than something you've seen so like there's teams that you'll just see that just have that magic and to have that soul power uh i, I talked a little bit about it with boston when they won it also with you know with chris sale and david price and all of that yep. and, you know didn't make the playoffs the next year yep. it's a it, 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 it it's so hard to back to back i'm gonna be so pumped when we see the next back-to-back world series champion because it's just wild so yep. anyway that was the big reason i took the braves is that they added those pieces and you know and freeman was the mvp so mm-hmm. uh, what, what was y'all what were y'all gonna so, say like preseason when we were doing like these episodes of like we're picking this picking that there was like like the season win projections came out and the Braves were I think it was like 96 wins or something like big like that and we we both said it, there's there was just no way because of preseason the NL East was stacked and obviously injuries have plagued you, no everybody. one could have predicted how bad the records in the because you even look at the the Phillies right they signed Wheeler Right, they, you've got Harper. Right, you re-sign your catcher. Like, you've got like that team should be better than it is. And then you look at the the Mets, the Mets had Lindor, and you've got Degrom and Syndergaard and Carrasco had a two seven ERA. He's a a career like three three ERA guy. Like, the, the Stroman's back. Like, okay, like this team is putting. Okay, we get Trevor May. Like Trevor May has been a stud. Mm-hmm. Like. The, add him he, into he signed the, Walker and he'd had so a good I, I started looking at it and I'm like I'm like I don't think anybody really in the division like is going to win 92 games because it's just going to be a bloodbath mm-hmm. so we thought right point. out of the it's gate that point. they were going to crush each other and grind each other out and then the Braves situation we've said is the Braves remind me a lot of the Yankees they've got a team that feels like they'll win a lot in the regular season but they just don't have that thing in the postseason because the Braves have been around for a minute now really looking good but then they get there and they underperform the Yankees oh look at us winning all these games and then they lose now there's maybe they got robbed of some stuff right in key moments but we're back to that same now they're underperforming both of them right how much is it that you relied on the analytics to consistently tell you this is how we'll win more games all regular season long and now you're having a year where analytics are kind of not playing out because that's what happened with analytics. You, you, you can predict to a degree, but sometimes you have outliers, right? And it distorts the situation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we outplay the analytics and sometimes we underplay them. And that's that balance. The, the Giants are currently overplaying what the analytics would have told you they do, right? Somebody's got to go in the opposite direction to, to maintain that balance. Um, so that was kind of our thing. The White Sox... We agreed with you in in, in spirit because we said that team felt like felt like it was underrated and they were making a move. Like they felt like they had the swagginess to them. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, this is a time where we feel like we've got some some stuff here, and and we're gonna make our move. And and, and Tim Anderson's like, we're 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 getting an aggressive tone here. I don't think I predicted them to be as good, but whoa, yeah. Let me let me dive in on that one a little. Let's bit. Let's get it. I, let me I dive know. in. Lance Lynn is an absolute savage. Yes. Yep. Savage maniac beast. Mm-hmm. Yes. Added him. Liam Hendricks, this dude's yep, when he's huge. on the mound, dude, this dude brings it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a great time with Liam Hendricks at a wedding one time. You add, you added Tony LaRusso, who's not gonna let you be comfortable. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna yeah. be comfortable. Yeah. It might be annoying, 
but he knows what he's doing, and it's not going to be comfortable for the other team. He like messes. He plays these weird. Did mind you like games. that move when they did that? The Larusa thing? Yeah, I did. I know there's a lot of like I haven't followed it enough other than watching the wins losses, but mm -hmm. and like knowing the talents of that team. Uh, I know they got some young bullpen arms as well. They had the I, I, I'm going to butcher his name. The lefty that throws a billion. Is he healthy still? Crochet? Cro Cro Gary Crochet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. So I just I just knew the Liam Hendricks is a huge energy yeah. shift. Mm -hmm. Lance Lynn is a huge energy shift. You know, Giolito's nasty. The Cease kid and Rondone, what mm -hmm. he's done. So, like, I'm still high. Mercedes. I, yeah, Mercedes kicked them yeah, off. Yeah, the, he the fell Mercedes off. thing, yeah. he lost his energy and his vibe. And I loved him because he was super fun to, in winter ball. He's a legend over mm -hmm. there. Uh, still a young kid, so hopefully he can get his groove back. I, I'm not sure how I, how I necessarily felt about that whole 3-0 going over the top thing, mm -hmm. but um, you know that's how Larusa feels, and Larusa, yeah. you know, hey, everyone has their different opinions. Mm -hmm. It may have taken the wind out of his. But I think that Larusa also has other strengths that mm -hmm. I think are good there. Which I think is why they brought him in because they knew that the big the strengths that like he could kind of unite the team with his experience and like obviously you said a ton of young guys who haven't really had the been to the playoffs and done all that stuff and he he can bring that level to them and i, I think it kind of like honed yeah. them in and that like you said you got, you got him as a world series pick like that, that's a big deal Which, speaking of world series you said you wanted to redo your halfway pick so what are they oh y'all want me to redo first yeah yeah oh Why man not? you've been there i'm not ready right now i need to think <laughs> no more. no that's why, more. that's why i'm asking. gonna put me I want on the, the spot that's like okay. to, who, who's gonna win it all or who's who, who like, who's, gonna, who's be, gonna win it all and who they play against i mean Man, it's tough. I, he's and like, I, we really threw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's he's like, like he's running through all right the now. scenarios. I'm, I'm, I'm running in the brain pretzel right now, like teams that are that are hitting my brain, and it's like because I have so many teams I root for. But I mean, obviously, like the Astros can't be denied, like what they're doing right mm -hmm. now, and I, I think they have arguably uh, reasons to believe they're going to continue to get better. Um, I would you, agree. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, but I don't want to. Uh, so I, you know, I think the Astros, but I'm gonna stick with the White Sox because they haven't lost anybody, and like I still believe in their pitching staff, and I think that, you know, the Larusa thing. So the AL, I'm kind of like I, I can stick with that one. I can stick. I, I like the White Sox. It's it's respectable. The okay. Astros, I think if, if I'm if I if I was like oh, I'm really gonna make a switch, I'm the next one I'm gonna take is the Astros. Okay. okay. I like that. It's probably not fair because I should study their pitching a little bit more, but I just mm -hmm. their run differential is out out like insane. Yeah. Um, the Oakland A's is another team that I really enjoy. It mm -hmm. depends. There's also going to be trades that are coming. So. Everything's gonna, I can't wait for the trade deadline. Change. Change. This, this, is the trade deadline. this is the All Star break. We can't hold you to anything. Yeah. Trade, the trade deadline hasn't happened yet. So, but everything can move. The NL team that's going to go is the Giants. Okay. That's fine. I'm taking, I'm taking the Giants fine. to win it all. Yeah, I mean, I gotta be. I, I, I yeah. I Listen, you, to. you're you're being a homer. I'm a homer. I it's think that, I think that the Mets is a valuable pick too right now. And I, who are y'all taking? So I, I actually want to. I'm I'm gonna do something. And my and my my partner Josh is gonna be very upset that I did this okay. uh, in in this thing. Um, so uh, five hundred dollars to the charity of your choice. I'll bet you that they don't win the World Series. You and me, public, we'll, 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 we'll do this up. That's, that's not really fair that they won't win the World Series because the odds on that are, like, insane. I can okay. just donate $500 to charity. This is, a, this is just this a is respect just a gentleman's bet. bet. If the, how about if the Mets win, I, I go to your charity. If the, it, so if the Mets win, I go to your charity. If the Giants win, I'll go you to go to my charity. Yep. And if neither win, we both go to a charity. Down. 250, 250. Deal. If they're Deal. playing each other, we're gonna have to watch that game. Deal that end and we'll make sure that the Am charity I? gets blasted to the six hundred and thirty thousand followers, and we'll work with the PA and we'll do all sorts of stuff. I got I him mean, down for this. I, mean, I like this. It's five hundred dollars. No, we'll go know, more. For charity. We'll, we, we can make more. That's fine. That's this a, can grow, but yeah, but I like that well, idea. Well, yeah, for you. Uh, so that way, just like five hundred dollars goes to a charity. People yep. can join us if they want. Yeah, absolutely. You get you got the you got the Mets. Yep. I, I got the I got the Giants. And if neither of them win, we both go on 50 fifty two fifty. Deal. And uh, what it. what charity what charity are you picking right now? Do you have a charity that you uh, want off the top? The charity that I like a lot, and it's is St. Baldrick's. Uh, so St. Baldrick's raises money for childhood cancer research, and multiple times in my life, uh, actually just before everything closed down with COVID. Uh, we've done a whole big push for raising money. Me and, and Dietz over there shaved our heads. Uh, so what you do when you do the donation, everybody shaves their head for solidarity for the kids because they walk around and they're living life. And for some of them, they're bald because they're going through chemo and they're going through radiation. And they feel abnormal because, hey, I lost my hair. So we shave our heads because now we all look the same. 
and you don't have to worry about feeling uncomfortable around anybody else. So St. Baldrick's is one that's been big for me uh, since I'm younger because I, I look at kids and they have a hard time uh, illustrating their pains, their problems, the things that are going on with them. So they can't speak up for themselves a lot to try to help the process. So we have to overhelp them. And that's why I like that is cancer is horrible for everybody. Um, a kid with it crushes me. Uh, so that that's mine. What's, your, what's yours? It's beautiful. Um, you know, like off the top of my head, the one, so I, I love planting trees and I want to like, I'm on this whole restore the planet. Like, you know, we gotta, we gotta pass on a, a beautiful earth to, you know, so that These kids. everyone, any kid, so yeah. that the kids can have a future. So yeah. for me, planting trees is the way. Um, there's a com there's a company in San Francisco that's called Friends of the Urban Forest, but we could find any company that's planting trees anywhere. Friends of the Urban Forest is the first one. I did Texas Trees Foundation when I was in Texas. So for me, it's going to be the the you know planting trees. So I'll say Friends of the Urban Forest right now. Perfect, that's the uh, one. Easy. Cool. And if let's say if ne neither win, I think going to kids with with cancer is is the one. So we'll go to your charity if neither win, and we both tip in. So no matter what, charity's winning. Yeah, I love You're that. Y'all are good with that. I Absolutely. love that. I love that. Yes. And I love the pick because. Uh, I I don't think that you can tell like I, I don't even know if the Mets are going to be the team right I yeah. want to say it right but when I really look at the NL this is going to be so much fun mm -hmm. it's going to be so stressful yeah. as a fan yep. yeah but like I look at all like all the all the situations like the NL East is probably going to have the worst team in terms of record yeah yeah right yep. so you're going to have a situation where the, the, the two is most likely playing the Mets or, or no, if the Mets win the division, so the Mets will be the three, the Mets will play yeah, the four. Yeah, so y'all probably play, like, if it's the Brewers or the Reds, whoever okay. wins the East will probably play that, and right. the West is going to have to beat themselves up again. Yep. Yeah. Son the of West a gun. Is, that yeah. happened last year, too. Yep. Yeah. Last That's year, all the West teams so knocked each other yep. out. Yep. We need to fix this system. That's Memphis. why, and, and if, if the if the Giants stay the way they are, like, we're going to get Dodgers, Padres in the, in the wild card. It's just going to happen. Somebody's going to get knocked out real quick. Oh man, that's sad. Yeah. I would like to see some of these West teams play the NL West teams play someone else in a playoff game because last year they didn't get to do it either. Right. Oh well, it is what it is. But yeah. I do love this. I do love this. I think it was. It's a great way. Uh, yeah. To to do something good and to enjoy more baseball. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that. And I think bringing a social aspect to it and having some fun with it is also part of it. Um, and again, I also think that this is a great way to end tonight. So I really appreciate you coming on our podcast and talking yeah, with this us is amazing. on a on a wide ranging uh, uh, set of topics and really getting to you know have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for coming out. Yeah, thank you all. So thank you both for <laughs> for the passion. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to talk baseball with some passionate passionate fans. And yeah, uh, yeah this was awesome. It's great what y'all are doing. Thank you. It. Thank you. And guys, thank you guys so much for watching today. And uh, leave a, a message. Let us know what you thought. And we'll see you guys next time. Baseball lifestyle, it's my lifestyle.